What's up guys, Commander Carl here, and now that the GTA 6 trailer is out, we're going to do a technical analysis of some of the potential graphical features we can see in Grand Theft Auto 6. Now this video is not going to be too long because to be honest, this trailer is so damn fast paced that it was really difficult for me to have enough time to actually take a deeper look at things. But there are some interesting tidbits that I managed to catch. So why don't we head on over to my computer and let's check out this trailer. Right off the bat, the lighting in the game strikes me as exceptionally realistic. Take for instance this scene with Lucia. Notice the way the sunlight bounces from her shirt onto her chin. Similarly, in scenes featuring buildings, the interaction between sunlight and the structures, along with the abundance of indirect lighting, is quite striking. These observations to me suggest that Rockstar might be utilizing a real-time global illumination system, likely through software based ray tracing similar to technology in Unreal 5 and Mafia Definitive Edition. It's also entirely possible that Rockstar opted for voxel-based GI, irradiance probes, or some other cheaper approximation of indirect lighting. For now, it's very hard to tell exactly what's going on under the hood. Reflections in the game seem to be the same hybrid system Rockstar used for RDR2. When you're viewing surface reflections at a narrow angle, you'll see what's called screen space reflections, or SSR for short. SSR is a post-processing effect, which means the effect is applied to the screen after the GPU chews up all the geometry and shaders. The reason I was able to confirm SSR is this scene where the cop is chasing a streaking man. You can see here that the reflection of this gas pump disappears entirely as the reflection of the streaking man passes by. This is a common issue with SSR algorithms as they typically do not handle the layering or sorting of multiple reflections very well. This is because SSR does not truly understand the 3D space. It only interprets pixel data from a 2D perspective. SSR has another weakness. At more intense viewing angles, the effect disappears. Again, this is just an inherent limitation of SSR. When SSR fails, Reflections are then handled by Rockstar's proprietary environment map system that they've used since GTA 4. Basically, a super low resolution environment map is generated from the camera and updated in real time. This system works pretty well for things like car reflections, reflections on guns, water puddles, etc. However, the effect generally breaks immersion when being viewed on building windows. You can see here in RDR2, as I move away from the window, the reflection appears to be magnifying, as if it's moving in the wrong direction. In a situation like this, it's likely too computationally expensive to fix, which is why the system system has remained unchanged since GTA 4. Combining screen space reflections with the proprietary reflection system I mentioned earlier is a fairly cost-effective approach and generally sufficient for the visual goals Rockstar is aiming to achieve. Moving on, there was one scene that caught my eye. From this footage here, it appears that the game's building interiors could be 3D rendered. While I'm not entirely certain, it's intriguing to ponder whether Rockstar is using full 3D modeling, or more likely, parallax interior mapping, a technique that creates the illusion of 3D behind a window, similar to what you'd see in the Spider-Man games from Insomniac. We also see some familiar elements from RDR2, such as the volumetric clouds. These are not simple visual tricks or 2D billboards. These are fully 3D volumetric clouds capable of casting shadows on both terrain and on themselves. It's unclear if there have been any enhancements to the system since its introduction in RDR2. A noteworthy feature evident from scenes like these NPCs walking on the beach here is ground tessellation. Rockstar has a history of using surface tessellation for elements like tree trunks, and it appears they will be extending this technology to their terrain systems, moving beyond the traditional parallax occlusion mapping we've seen in RDR2 and GTA 5. Now it's pretty hard for me to tell how Rockstar is handling shadowing, but in this scene where Lucia swings her hair, you can see how each strand casts its own shadow. This could indicate the use of ray trace shadowing, or more plausibly, it's just a carryover of the screen space shadow system from RDR2. This system is capable of producing detailed micro shadows that standard shadow maps wouldn't have the resolution to render. Let's move on to the water, which appears to be exceptionally well rendered, though the rapid pace of the scenes makes a detailed analysis pretty challenging. Given that the water in RDR2 was already really impressive, it seems Rockstar may not have significantly altered the water system for GTA 6, apart from some adjustments in color and texture. Let's move on to character animations. In GTA 6, these are notably lifelike, possibly the most realistic I've ever seen in a Rockstar title to date. Hair animation is especially impressive. For example, in this scene, hair moves with such realism it's as though each strand is individually animated. This level of detail is particularly remarkable in an open world game where dozens of NPCs are going to be displayed on screen simultaneously. Concluding my analysis, there aren't really many other standout features that catch my eye beyond what I've discussed. The rapid pace of the scenes in this trailer makes it quite challenging to conduct a more in-depth examination of the game's graphical elements. Really, it seems beyond the major things I mentioned, graphically the game will be very similar to Red Dead Redemption 2, which is great because that game still looks amazing even five years later. And that pretty much concludes my analysis of everything. If I missed anything, or if there's something you guys want me to take another look at, let me know in the comments below, and I'll do my best to reply to each and every one of you. But I think I've pretty much covered everything noteworthy that's going to be seen in GTA 6. That being said, thanks for watching, guys. And if there's any games you want me to do any technical analysis on, let me know in the comments below. You can always use some ideas. All right, thanks, guys. Commander out.